I thought I'd do a, a kind of an update video on the DeWalt 790 Ready Alarm Saw, some of the things that I have uh, done since the last video, some things I've discovered. So let's take a look here. All right. There's a saw. I don't know if I need to zoom in on it or not. Uh, there we go. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was the table adjustment. Uh, this saw, uh, there is a channel iron, well, an angle iron, that's attached to the edge of the fence down here that runs along here from the back to about right here. All right, there's, a, there's an anchor bolt in the side of the cabinet that anchors this angle, angle iron to the side of this cabinet here, and there's one way back here. Well, what you're trying to accomplish is to get this height on this side of the table and that height on the other side of the table to match. That's easy. Now you want to get this to slope the same as the sag in the arm, column, and base, which is repeatable sag, so don't worry about it. You're never going to get, you could make this thing 10 times as strong, you're still going to have sag, so don't worry about the sag. Uh, what you want it that's what the adjustments all about to compensate for the sag well the problem is is you have one bolt here this is about nine inches back 10 inches maybe from the front edge of the table and you've got another bolt back here that is nine inches from your fence line you're trying to adjust here so you get this set and now you swing around to the center so that you can get a proper depth dado and you adjust this up and down until you get the proper depth dado well guess what when you lifted this up or moved it down because this is not pivoting right here it's pivoting way back there this changes and so you're chasing your tail I got three hours in tuning on this thing and I'm still not satisfied with the depth of dado. I've got a flat table. I checked it straight edge to the front, straight edge here, straight edge across uh, the ends, and straight edge corner to corner. This table is as close to flat as you can get a table. But my dado is running 15 thousandths deeper at the far edge uh, out 13 or 14 inches than it is up close to the fence, which means that this table has to go down. But if I push this down, it's going to change these. Um, well, uh, <laughs> so I, I'm, going to, I'm going to deal with it the way it is, and I'll, and, I, and I'll keep tinkering with it with these adjustments until I get it within a couple of thousands of depth for a cross-cut data, like if I wanted to do a bookshelf or anything like that. So my solution would have been, had I, had I known I was going to have this fight to begin with, I would have drilled the angle iron right below this point and below the same point on the other side of the saw. I would have drilled through that angle iron and put in a 3 eight or a, a, a 5 16 or a quarter inch bolt. I would put a slot in the angle iron so I could make the adjustments at this point and have the pivot points be right there, not way back here but right here. Then when I got this set anchored down, then this would pivot up and down and it wouldn't change those two adjustments. I swear you could probably get this table adjusted in an hour or a half hour if, if it was set up that way. Well, that's, that's enough said. Uh, you know, I, I'm not satisfied with it, but I, I will be when I'm finished. Um, uh, I, I just finally got so frustrated with it, I just kind of gave it up being I wasn't doing any datas. I'm just doing cross cuts right now anyway, cross cuts and rips. So, it's fine. Uh, it's just not, uh, it's just not the way I want it. Um, all right. The next thing is the heel adjustment. <coughs> now, you can do this, 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 this horizontal heel uh, with a framing square. Are we in the picture here? I think so. 
it's hard for me to see that little screen. I'm going to move this in a little closer. Uh, you, you can do uh, this heel adjustment uh, with a framing square, right? And your adjustment screws are right back here on the back of the yoke. And, 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 and I've got it uh, pretty well perfect. Well, it is perfect, I mean, according to the square. But you know how I did that? I squared this arm to the fence until it would pass the five cut squaring method and I got it down to a thou and a half, all right, which is 15 ten thousandths. That's, I mean, that's pretty damn square. Uh, that's less than the thickness of a hair uh, over the course of 13 inches. Uh, I can't get any better than that. If I tried to get any better than that, I'd overshoot the other direction. So I've got that. Now, here is how I adjusted that. Uh, uh, heel. Uh, it's important that you have, in my opinion, I, I, I think you should, I think it, it's a good investment to buy one of these uh, CMT uh, set plates. Uh, I think they're about $25. And, and I, I've used it on three saws now. So it's, you know, uh, it, it's, a, it's a worthwhile investment. It's a sanding disc too, but I'm never going to use it for a sanding disc. I, I just want to save it for uh, for setting up my saw and testing my saw. Now, if this arm is square to this fence and this fence is straight, then when I push this back gently to that fence and have this, this disc touching the fence and tighten that lock nut, the clamp over here, this, you should be able to see that crack between the plate and the fence. And if there's a crack on this side, but not the other side, you've got some adjusting to do. If there's a crack on that side, but not this side, you've got some adjusting to do. Both sides should touch at the same time. And the bottom should touch also. So you should have complete contact uh, of that arc of the, of the blade right down there. Should be just gently rubbing it, just gently touching it. All right. Now, here, here's the big advantage that I found. Instead of having the adjustment screws way back in the back where they're hard to reach, why, they're, they're, they're right here on the end, wide open. And you don't have to keep lifting the square up to see where you're at. You just, you just look at the gap and you say, oh, I need to spin this around this way. So you loosen this one, a sixteenth of a turn or a, or a thirty-second of a turn, and you tighten this one. And you, and you take a peek. Not enough. Loosen a little bit more. Tighten this one. Ah, we got it. It is so easy. Once you've got it, then you just give this one a minute little tightening and this one a minute little, minute little tightening to, 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 to uh, compensate for the tightening you did on this one. Give it one more look. Tighten your locking nuts. Give it one more look and you're probably good to go. So, uh, I like the method, uh, and, and uh, I checked it. it. It's good in that position. It's equally good in this position, all right? But adjusting in this position is much more difficult because you're working in the blind. You can't see back there to get that Allen wrench in to get the wrench on it. Uh, you have to, every time you want to check, you have to lift this up and look at it. Nah, this, this method works much better. Okay, the next thing that I did was uh, for ripping. I built these hold down clamps. This is just a wheel uh, off of a bent, the, the, the frame on it was bent on a caster. But the wheel was great, so I just took a, I just uh, drilled the rivet out that was holding that uh, that rivet axle that was holding the the, uh, the wheel on there. Took the wheel out of it, got a three eighths bolt, yeah, three eighths three eighths bolt, and then I drilled the hole in the center of the wheel to match this three eighths bolt. I got this style of bolt rather than the carriage bolt because it's got a smooth shaft for about 
three inch of the three inches of it okay and just the last inch is threaded then I got jam nuts one jam nut down there to hold the wheel and and and, and an Allen, or I'm sorry, a wing nut uh, to hold this. This, let me use the other one. Are we, in, are we in frame? I think we are. Yeah. This has a, this sticks out right here a quarter inch past this surface right here. This rip fence has a quarter inch deep plow in it all the way across. Now when I put this in there, this goes in the plow. This can't lift up. All right. Put a C-clamp on it to hold it in place. Get it down just a little bit. Then tilt this wheel just a little bit where the wheel is running at an angle. So that when you're shoving the board through, it's forcing the board into the fence. All right. You do the same thing on the other end. And you get these as close to, to the guard as you can, okay? Because uh, you, can, you can put them anywhere along here, all right? Uh, and then clamp it down, give it a little tilt, finish tightening it. Uh, get your board in that you're going to rip. All right, this is tight. Get your board in, it's going to rip. Drop the wheel down on top of it. Give it just a little bit of pressure. You got a rubber wheel there that's going to dig in a little bit. Um, I'm probably going to have to bury this bolt, but now that wheel is turning, which means that uh, it's making full contact with that. You cannot lift that up, but it moves pretty freely. And also, if you start with this thing out like this and go backwards, it gets further away from the fence. If you start out here with a thing about a sixteenth of an inch away, you go just a little bit and this wheel has forced this piece of wood over to the fence because you've got the, the, the wheel angled just a little bit. It's like toe on your car, um, which makes it track straight down the road. So um, that's about it. Um, uh, I, I wanted something better uh, than this. I think this was a fairly decent uh, concept. Uh, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give it away with uh, when I sell the saw, I'll just leave it with the saw and if, if they like it, fine. Uh, I also find that with, with these wheels canted uh, at around at an angle, canted around, I find, uh, I just did a rip about, it, oh, I don't know, 45 minutes ago, uh, and I found out that I didn't even need to use uh, the uh, feather boards to hold it in tight to the fence. It hugs it in there tight to the fence. It pushes it down tight to the table. So if you're doing a, a plow or a dado across the length of a board, the, the dado would be the same depth because the board is held down tight all the way along. Um, yeah, I, I like it very much. Um, uh, I suppose if I was to do it over again, I might make things a little bit differently. Uh, and if you make one, uh, you'll probably make yours differently. Um, I drew it up on, uh, uh, what do they call that plan? Um, SketchUp, uh, and then and then photocopied or not photocopied, but printed the the things out and brought them out here uh, for my dimensions, and then I changed the dimensions uh, kind of on the fly. So it, it, it's a little bit different than the plans I drew, but um, uh, they work great. Um, I recommend them. So that's about it for today. I didn't want to make uh, too long a video. Sometimes I get carried away. Uh, uh, I want you to see my old dog here before I. Come here, killer. Come here, boy. You gotta see killer before. If I can find killer. There he is. There's the shop dog. That's killer. There we go. All right, now you've seen killer. Yeah, he, he keeps an eye on the place. He's, uh, uh, he's under a lot of pressure. He's under constant patrol guarding uh, the estate here. So uh, thanks for watching the video and uh, 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 I hope uh, there was something of value in it for you. Thanks again.